David Alder, and today on Texas Eats, thank you, Adrian, we're getting down with nature here at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. We're getting an exclusive look at the all-new Spurs food truck. Our, our chef's wife is Venezuelan, so if he messed that dish up, he would have had other problems to deal with. <laughs> Plus, we're heading to Helotus to go inside a food truck serving up some wild churro desserts. Churro, you know how to make a good churro. That is delicious. And the Botanical Garden is sharing fresh recipes from their garden you won't want to miss. Fresh in the garden, so I mean... It tastes springy. Our first stop is at an iconic breakfast and brunch destination in San Antonio. Located off Broadway near 410 in San Antonio is one of the most iconic bakeries that you gotta check out. Let's go inside La Panaderia. Joining me now is David Caceres. He's the co-owner out here at La Panaderia and there is so much good food in front of me. This one right here is hitting me, but how long has the bakery been open? Uh, we opened in 2013. We started in the farmer's market, September 2014, and then we opened this location uh, April 2014. Wow, so I mean, like right after the farmer's market took right off, after, you jumped we, right into it. We were sold out every single Sunday at the farmer's market, so we thought it was a good idea to create like a brick and mortar store. Now you have all kinds of different lattes, you have the sweets, but I want to talk about this savory item right here. This is like a take on Eggs Benedict, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I love Eggs Benedict and I always thought it was a good idea. But um, in order to be more aligned with our branding and with the things that we do here with our background, uh, we thought about uh, to twist it a little bit, though, a little bit. So that's why the Ranchero Eggs Benedict thing made a lot of sense to us. Oh, look at that. <laughs> they were perfect. I mean, poached eggs cooked to perfection. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> well, those are one of my favorite ones for sure. Wow. The ranchetto sauce on there. You can put that on anything. Yeah. And it's going to be delicious. Yeah, yeah. That's it's a little bit smoky thing. even. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But the bread, I mean, you're making the bread here in house. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. The bread is the, uh, well, that's what it's a bakery. <laughs> and bakers are supposed to, uh, to yeah. bake. David's like, hey, David, listen up. We're a bakery. We make <laughs> bread here, okay? No, but I mean, it's incredible. This right here is being, it's all being done right here in house. Yes. And you're, it's just a knock, knockout. This is crazy. If you want to get a breakfast bite unlike anything else in the Alamo City, you got to try the Ranchero Eggs Benedict. It's a little bit smoky, it's a little bit sweet, but overall, it's very savory and very filling. The sauce on there mixed with the eggs, the perfectly poached eggs, which is a killer point of this as well. That is the ideal bite that you want in the morning. Yes. That is so good. Yeah. And that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Well, uh, you, can, you can take it for uh, breakfast or you can take it for brunch too. Mm. A little soup on the side, absolutely incredible. Now, as you said, as you made very clear, right? This is a bakery. <laughs> <laughs> so you're making all different kinds of baked goods, but talk to me about what's going on here. These look incredible. So, okay, so this is the Tres Leches Croissant. It's a very Mexican thing. It's a very San Antonian thing, um, but also we are very well known uh, for our croissants. Um, I went for a school with, um, uh, with a French uh, background. So I learned about croissants and Mexico City is also known for the croissants. So we tried to mix and put uh, something together and these ones came out pretty good. Uh, also, we had a little bit of tequila on those ones. Oh, and tequila is kind of your secret, right? Yes, you know the, kind of I the mean, secret, yes. The tequila almond croissant, which is one of the best bites you can get in the Alamo City, is right here at La Panaderia. But this one's the Tres Leches croissant. Give it a bite. <laughs> yeah. That one is to die for. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're looking for something sweet, either it's breakfast, it's lunch, dinner, it's dessert. You gotta try the Tres Leches Croissant. It is packed full of so much flavor, the fresh fruit that's in there, and it's the mascarpone that's in there that's whipped up a little bit. It adds a whole different depth of flavor to it that you've never had before, and you gotta try. That one has several secrets. So usually when you're making Tres Leches, uh, you use like whipped cream. Mm -hmm. uh, but, wow. um, 
We wanted to take to a different level, so instead of using whipped cream, we use uh, mascarpone whipped cream. Oh my goodness! So there that's, you go. that's why the flavor comes like uh, more like more deep, and it's kind of different, and the quality is higher. Yeah, uh, and you can taste it for sure. Yeah, it's it's much more bold. Bold, yes. Yeah, and like whereas a whipped cream would be kind of like here and gone, uh -huh. that kind of stays with you a little bit longer. Yeah, exactly. The fresh fruit on there. Yeah. That's the way you got to yeah, do it. Yeah, it has to. Do, it has to, do, to be with fresh fruit for wow. sure. Wow! All right, David, already blowing my mind. Now this is the El Fabrito. This is the sunny side up version of the sandwich. You're baking the bread right here, but talk to me about what goes in the sandwich. Croissants is something that we really enjoy, but this one is made in. in, in it's it's a round croissant, and it's something that uh, I really like. So I really like to eat like a croissant with eggs. Oh, yeah. That's one of my favorite things. That's, wow, what, that's yeah. where the name El Favorito came up. Because <laughs> it's your favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite, exactly. Uh, so we just try to put uh, something very simple together, which is a, a croissant with eggs uh, and, and and with cheese. Which yeah, I was going to say, you, got, like, you kind of get your, like, your meat of choice, right? This one has the ham, the cheese, the egg, and look at that. That's the bite right there, y'all. I don't even know. You know, I'm gonna, gonna have a napkin. I'm gonna eat one just after we finish. Oh finished my it goodness. That one is loose. Very, very good. With the name like El Pabrito, you know the sandwich is gonna be really good because it's somebody's favorite, but it's actually David's favorite, which is really funny that he would call it that on the menu considering that it's his favorite item. It's got the sunny side up eggs. You can get scrambled on there as well. I highly recommend the sunny side up. A little bit of ham, a little bit of Swiss cheese on there, and a croissant. That's an ultimate breakfast bite. That is the best breakfast bite ever. And you have that perfectly cooked egg, the cheese on there, it's a little bit of that salty, savory, yeah. and then you have the ham that, of course, a little bit is sweet, but it's, I mean, it's like, this is what you think of when you think of an all-American like, kind of sandwich bite. This is incredible. Different items, all different kinds of characteristics to them, but they all taste high-end. Yeah. And would you say that more people are, go are getting to go? Like, is that an option that you can get out here? Yeah, right now, ordering online, it's uh, it's a good option. With uh, COVID-19 and everything that is going on, it's a safer way. So we have uh, lapanaderiaonline.com. So people is going to the online store, they're ordering everything. We have all every item, it's online. So you can oh. order, just stop here and just take it uh, take it to go. There you go. So if you want to stop in, go to, take it to go. Take it to go. Go online, La Panaderia right there. You can order everything. I love it. Absolutely incredible. I want to try a bite of everything that's in there on display. David, thank you so much for having us out David, here. David, it's always a pleasure. If you're looking for some delicious baked goods in San Antonio, you got to check out La Panaderia. Now, we're heading to the Botanical Gardens for a fresh salad recipe that you can make at home. Joining us now is Lexi Phelps. You are the chef and wellness program specialist out here at the Botanical Gardens. But what is CHEF? So CHEF is a local nonprofit. It stands for Culinary Health Education for Families. And they work to teach families and kids really basic cooking skills um, so that they can make healthier um, nutrition choices in their diet. Just like what's in front of us right now. It yeah, exactly. smells fresh and that's important. And you have different items here. Now, have these been sourced from what's around us? Yeah, so we're making a Shirazi salad today and I chose that because at its base is cucumbers, tomatoes, and fresh parsley. Ooh. And those are all things growing in our garden right now. And that's why our Chef Teaching Kitchen is so unique because kids can come out here, get their hands dirty, harvest the own ingredients, and it's a really great way for them to connect with the plants. All right, so what do we do? All right, so I'm gonna have you do everything. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and put our cucumber in first. All and you of don't it? wanna put all of it. You're gonna <laughs> put um, about, about just the top layer. Okay. Okay, that's good. And then let's Perfect. put some tomatoes. Tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes from the garden. And I mean, just to be able to go out there and source it all and then come over here and cook it, it gives you a whole new appreciation for vegetables, right? Definitely. Or for just like the, the agriculture, farmers. It's a big appreciation. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. Next one. Yeah, so we're going to add our um, garbanzo beans, which is a really great source of plant protein. Wonderful. And yeah, exactly. The kids being able to actually go into the garden and pick their own produce is just a really great way for them to understand that, you know, our food does come from the earth, it comes from plants. Um, so red onion, then we're gonna add that fresh parsley just on top a little bit. Ooh, that looks all right, pretty. and then with your tongs there, you're gonna toss that all together. Okay. I'm gonna get our dressing going. This is super simple, just olive oil, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. Really can't go wrong. Ooh. I'm gonna put a little bit on this. I mean, this alone right there looks fantastic. It's beautiful, right? and yeah. that's a really huge thing we focus on with the kids. You know, the more colors you have in your bowl or on your plate from plants, the more vitamins and minerals you're getting. Put a little bit of that on top. You can toss that a little bit more. Awesome. Yeah, and there you have it. Super light, super refreshing. 
great snack or side dish on a summer day. This looks amazing. That was so fast, y'all. That was so easy. Now, if somebody wanted to get this recipe for that dressing, could they, could they find it on a website? Yeah, you can find it at chefsa.org. And if you want to know more about our partnership with Chef or the chef classes we have here at the Botanical Garden, you can check it out at www.sebot.org. That's delicious. That's so fresh. Well, now we're going to check out a food truck that is inspired by the San Antonio Spurs. This is the Spurs Street Eats food truck, and we're going to go inside and see what's on the menu. Joining me now is Carlos Ortiz. He's the assistant director of Levy Restaurants at the AT&T Center. And the man responsible for getting some wheels on this on this truck right here and get it rolling around town, right? Yep, partially, there was a few <laughs> of us working on it. It's an exciting project uh, that, that the Spurs have asked us to do and we're excited to do it. The experience that you have in a food trucks is not like you've been doing this for like a couple months, a couple years. You've been doing this for quite a while. I, overall in food and beverage, it's been 20 years and I was lucky enough to operate my own food truck in Miami several years ago. What dish is this? So these are the Venezuelan arepas and uh, with slow braised beef and uh, they're filled with spices and, um, and they're, it's, everything's caramelized inside with the vegetables. So please feel free, enjoy it. Give it a bite. Wow. <laughs> that is really good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. The meat is so tender. Yeah, well, that's because it's, it's slow cooked and braised, so. Mm. And like, the flavor is just all throughout. It's, it's really the, you can tell there's a lot of love put into this. Uh, this is a Spurs food truck, but right. it's more like the food is inspired by the like San Antonio area and the concession, but it's not concession food. Right, no, not at all. Actually, the, the bigger inspiration was original street food. And so Chef Manny, this dish, um, it looks straightforward, but talk to me about it. What's going on here? We have a, a street taco concept. So we're doing, you know, three uh, mini tacos with can be pork, can be barbacoa. Yeah, street tacos, I mean, you can't go wrong with street tacos, right? Absolutely. A little bit of salsa verde on the side salsa as well. Salsa verde on the side, you know, everything made in house. Is some cotija cheese on there as well? Cotija cheese, queso fresco. This is incredible. Is this the same braised beef that was in uh, the other dishes as well, the arepa? That's correct. And that's, you know, that's what we wanted to show you that we can do either with the arepa or we can do with the taco. And uh, so we're going to have, you know, plenty of options for our customers. That braised beef, just put it in a quart container and sell it like that. <laughs> that is delicious. It is so juicy. It is. Very, Even on yeah, just we... right here, you put a little bit of the lime on there, the salsa verde, a little bit of cilantro on there, and the cheese. I mean, you got a very delicious street taco. Give me some love again, man. Ah. Woo! All right. That is good. Fantastic. I love that the Spurs are doing this. They're going out there. And who knows what the truck will, will bring? You never know. So you make sure you follow them on social media. Uh, today is going to be their launch day, Saturday. Uh, you got to make sure you're going out to Lock and Terra for their grand opening event. But make sure you also, like I said, you follow them on social media because you'll know where they're going to be at. And maybe they're going to introduce some new items on social media before you get out there as well. Thank you so much. Uh, the food is fantastic. You can't go wrong. Go first, go. Go first. Coming up later in the show, we're heading to a Southside barbecue joint serving crazy brisket grilled cheese sandwiches. And next on the show, we're going to Holotus to get a taste of some wild churro desserts. Don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. We're here in the middle of nowhere near Holotus, Texas to go check out a food truck that is making some wild churro desserts. Let's go check out the snack bar food truck. Joining me now is husband and wife duo Nick and Samantha, and they have a lot of delicious treats. You can see it right here on the menu. Now, Samantha and Nick, did y'all come up with this on your own? Is there an inspiration behind this? Yeah, we did pretty much come up with it on our own. And a little bit of traveling, a little bit of my creative side with my <laughs> good uh, churro making, just put it all together in one, and Ooh. there you go. And I always wanted a food truck or a shop, so I decided on the food truck. And there you go. <laughs> Now, Nick, you're going to hand me out something crazy right here, right? There we go. These are a coconada one right there. Okay, so, Samantha, talk to me about this. And this is our coconada. It's our Italian ice, almonds, almond joy, and our fresh churros that are made by the order. Churros? You said you you like making them? You're good at making them? Yes. How long have you been making them? Mm, not too long, but I just right when I started making them, I got compliments, so I'm like, might as well. That's where I got my idea. Let's put it all together. Give me some foot. Give me some fun. Girl, you know how to make a good churro. That is delicious. In and around 1604 here in San Antonio, there are a lot of dessert options, but this one right here, the snack bar food truck, is worth driving out here for. I don't care if you live in shirts, you live in Cibolo, you drive on out here, you will not be disappointed. Mm -hmm. And the texture. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's more waffle-y, mm -hmm. goes better with the ice cream. How, where did you pick this up at? I just practiced and made my own. It's a secret recipe. <laughs> it's a secret recipe. Look at Nick. This is our strawberry cheesecake. Strawberry cheesecake. Mm -hmm. Two things that should always go together. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Just the cheesecake alone part is really good. But here we go. Then you get the churro in there. Dip it in all that goodness. And all our churros, yeah. too, are decorated with, like, how it goes. Oh, yeah. With, so yeah. Each one matches the theme. The theme. Mm -hmm. That's adorable. This one's my favorite one so far. This is it. <laughs> there are a ton of different flavors on the menu. They're all really, really, really good. But my favorite is the strawberry cheesecake. You can't go wrong. It's like the best of both worlds. And then you add in the amazing churro that's in there. That is a secret recipe. Phenomenal. I love strawberries. I love cheesecake. You put them together with a good churro like this, there's really no dessert that can top that. That one is just the, the mint, the cookie mint, and just our green uh, secret little mint. You guys got a lot of secrets <laughs> for our little food truck. You guys are packing them in there. All right. Oh, look at that. That's the bite, y'all. You get like a little bit of everything on that churro like that. All right, this one has like cinnamon toast crunch. crunch yeah. It has like all the fixings on there, which is like one of my favorite cereals. And you've made it into this insane mixture of items. What else goes in there? That one's just cinnamon toast crunch and the caramel and our cookie, like a cinnamon cookie and our oh. churros. Man, this and is... then we top our churros with cinnamon crumbs too, cinnamon toast crunch. All right, so who cooked in your family? Mom, dad, uncle, mm, aunt? Mom. Mom, mom was the cook. Did she ever think in a million years you'd come up with something like this? Probably yes, because I've <laughs> always been creative like that. <laughs> yeah, that's good cereal. Where can people find you guys? How do they get information on where you're going to be um, at? You can find us on Facebook or Instagram. Our address is on both of them. You got to come out here, try this trail. I swear, it's better than your grandma's, and that's a big statement. But you got to come check them out. It's a family-owned business. And why not? It's hot out here, guys. Come cool down. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we travel to a dessert spot serving wildly sweet creations. And next, we go inside a New York-style pizza joint in San Antonio. So stay tuned. Texas Eats will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. The Last Slice is an East Coast style pizza joint on the northeast side of San Antonio. They're serving up cheesesteak sandwiches and cheesesteak fries, chicken wings, fresh Greek salads, and all kinds of pizzas. Like their house special, the White Roasted Garlic Pizza. All of the doughs made fresh every morning and prepared to order. The house special pizza is made with creamy Alfredo sauce instead of red sauce, a heavy layer of baby spinach, handfuls of mozzarella cheese, minced roasted garlic, and bell peppers. It's topped with chunks of grilled all-white chicken breast and pieces of freshly chopped bacon. The pizza gets a thin layer of cornmeal on the bottom and slid into the pizza oven to bake. If you're looking for something a little bit wild, right, something that's going to have a lot of great flavor, maybe something you never tried before, you got to try the white roasted garlic pizza. Check this out. It's got an Alfredo sauce for the base as opposed to a traditional red sauce. And then you have all kinds of different fresh toppings on there as well. You have a little bit of spinach on there, some bell peppers, you have a little bit of bacon, and then you have the white chicken on there as well. You can see those tender chunks of chicken on there, cooked to perfection, a little bit of cheese on there, just enough. That's the one. Oh, you got it. That's the pizza you need to try when you come out here. The Alfredo sauce sets it over the top. Delicious. It smells like garlic, tastes like garlic, has a really nice texture again on the crust. They know what they're doing out here. And there's a reason why this place has been rocking for three years in San Antonio. The Last Slice offers vegetarian options and pizzas for meat lovers. This right here is the screaming vegan pizza, right? It's got all kinds of toppings on it. Look at this. No cheese, okay, because it's vegan, so no cheese goes on it. But you're gonna get cherry tomatoes, regular tomatoes, mushrooms, artichoke hearts, red onions, a little bit of arugula, and a balsamic glaze on top. Look at that. That just looks good. That's the first pizza I've ever had with no cheese on it, and it's delicious. This is really good. But when you order, you gotta get the cheesesteak sandwich. Thinly sliced ribeye, onions, bell peppers, and mushrooms get cooked on a flat top with bacon grease. Flake salt seasons the mix and mozzarella and provolone cheese gets added on top. The melty mix gets smashed between a toasted hoagie roll and served with your choice of regular fries or cheesesteak fries. Look at that. <laughs> that looks dangerous cereal. This is phenomenal. If you're a sandwich person and you're looking for that next delicious sandwich, this is where you need to come into. It's a pizza joint, but they're making a heck of a sandwich. The shaved ribeye on there and the peppers, when they're like cooked ever so lightly, they still have a nice al dente crunch to them on the pepper. Perfect, and that little bit of bacon grease. But then you put it and mix it up there with the cheese, this is where it's at, y'all. The pizza shop opened three years ago when owner and chef Alejandro Perez graduated culinary school and wanted to start a restaurant that satisfied everyone's taste buds. When I make pizza, I put my heart and soul into it. And I, I want people to enjoy their dinner. Uh, this is more East Coast, uh, New York style. You gotta fold it when you uh, take the first bite. The pizza joint is doing everything to adhere to CDC guidelines and offers customers a clean and safe choice for delicious pizza, salads, and sandwiches to go, curbside and delivery. This is a San Antonio treasure, y'all. This is what's up. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we travel to a dessert spot serving wildly sweet creations. And next, we're traveling to a Mexican restaurant that you won't want to miss. Texas Eats will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now, we're heading to the north side of San Antonio in the Stone Oak area to go inside of a Mexican restaurant that's reimagining traditional Mexican cuisine. Let's go inside Frida, Mexican restaurant and bar. Much like the historical and eclectic artist Frida, the menu at the restaurant is diverse. Out here at Frida Mexican Restaurant, there is an assorted plate of mini tacos. And they're like mini, mini tacos, right? So you can try all of them and you won't be too full. Now there's a marlin, there's ribeye, al pastor, and there's also sarero. Now this right here, this is the al pastor. That's like my favorite kind of little mini taco you can get. It has a little bit of sauce on the side as well. And you have some papas there in the middle, a little bit of lime. You know what though? You got lime, you gotta use it, okay? That's just the way it goes. So you get your lime, right onto the top. <laughs> That's a juicy line. The texture on the outside has a nice little bit of, like a little char to it from the grill. But then you get that roasted pineapple on there as well. The acidity cuts through a lot of that fat, so you're getting a well-rounded bite. But then you have the tortilla, which is a great little mechanism for all this flavor. I mean, that's a home run. And they're so tiny, you, it's like you're guilt-free. You can eat all of them. <laughs> that is, it's like butter. That is really good, y'all. We do have an outdoor area. It is a fairly large patio, so if you feel the need that maybe you don't want to be inside because it's due to the circumstances, we're more than happy to accommodate you outside. This right here is the roasted cauliflower. It comes with the chili mayonnaise that's brushed on top, right? It's called Frida's, right? So you gotta brush some stuff on there. And then you got the little bit of the Parmesan cheese, the microgreens, and then there's a chili oil that comes on the outside of it. And then you get a lime right on the side, and you just put it on there. This is a juicy lime, y'all. They must, they know how to pick limes out of here, too. Incredible, here we go. That's the bite. All of that chili and the mayonnaise soaks right into the cauliflower. Nice Parmesan crust on the outside. The microgreens give it a nice texture as well. It's a well-rounded bite. They know how to build on flavors out here. And it's really bold, but it's also very simple. And it's, I mean, it's a cauliflower. You've probably had cauliflower a lot before in your life. I guarantee you, you haven't had it like this before. Frida for us is a symbolism and an inspiration. As you can see, we have the blue piano just reminding of the blue house, for instance, that she has, uh, where she used to do all her artwork. I c created an acronym uh, for all of us, which Frida means family restaurant innovating delightful artistry. When it comes time for dessert, you gotta order the trudels, and it's not just any kind of presentation. Come on, you're out here at Frida, look at this. You have a little trudel cart, and it comes with a little top, and look at that, you make the reveal, and there you go. That's so fun. You guys gotta come out here to Frida, right here in Stone Oak, Make it a meal, make it, come out here, bring the family. This is awesome. And then when you wrap it up, make sure you get the dessert. The Trudos are where it's at. Now, we're heading back to the Botanical Gardens for a refreshing cocktail recipe that you can make at home. Joining us now is Chef Katrina Flores. She's out here at the Botanical Gardens doing a lot of really delicious things, but you're making a cocktail for us right now, right? Yes, I am. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna okay. be using ingredients from our Zachary Foundation Culinary Garden. So this is gonna be a basil bourbon refresher. Ooh. I know, for a hot day. And you know day. what, it is, it is, we need a refresher right exactly. now. So what's the first thing you do? So I'm gonna go ahead and put one brown sugar cube into my shaker. Uh -huh. Next, I'm gonna put half an ounce of balsamic syrup. I huh. made this earlier today, so it's just equal parts water, sugar, and balsamic vinegar. I brought it to a what? boil okay. for about two to three minutes and it's gonna pair really nicely with the bourbon. You could smell it already, just right there. The balsamic in the yeah. air. It's I not think. as vinegary, it's a little bit sweet. Yeah. And then next I'm gonna add in some cardinal basil mm. and then give this a quick muddle. Once you started ripping it apart, you could it's like aromatic, it yes. just hits the air. So the just... cardinal basil, mm. we grow it in our culinary garden here. It's a little bit different than other basils. It has an anish licorice flavor, okay. which pairs really nicely again with the bourbon inside of our drink. And you can't really find this type of basil in the grocery store, but it's really easy to grow. You can even, you don't need a plant, grow it from seed. Oh. So you can have it in, in your house. And then you can find it out here. Right. But if you come out here and you start grabbing it, they're gonna stop. <laughs> You're gonna see people <laughs> out here just like taking it as they're going. And okay. so what are you adding in right there? Next, we're gonna add our bourbon in. So I'm gonna add one and a half ounces of bourbon. 
little extra on top there. A little splasher. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna put some ice in here and we're gonna give us a quick shake. And Please. talk to me about, when you're shaking that up, talk to me about the culinary program out here, because, I mean, it's more than just making cocktails. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have a huge assortment of classes for all ages, um, from making your own pizzas to whipping up a refreshing cocktail. You can really experience life in full bloom when you sign up for one of our cooking classes. Just drop the mic and walk away after that. You that know. is great. I so, love that. This is all agitated, and it's nice and cold. So we're going to go ahead and put this in our glass. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then I'm gonna to top this off with two ounces of ginger beer. Oh, look at you. So not only is this gonna add more flavor, but it's gonna put a little bit of a fizz in here, which yes. I really like in my drinks. I think it makes it a little bit more refreshing. And then top it off with more cardinal basil. And that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and that's how you do it. Now, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Now, of course. Gonna take it to the nose. Smells amazing. It's sweet. Like you said, the yeah. vinegar is not there. What do you think? It's super refreshing. It's almost like root beer. Yeah. It kind of has like an essence of root beer to it. It's really easy to drink, right? Yes. So on a hot day like this, you can just sit back and relax with it. I just want to dump this on my head right now. It's so refreshing. <laughs> now, this in front of us, real quick, talk to me about what's going on. It looks delicious. Yeah, so I paired our cocktail with this pesto zucchini and peach burrata pizza. So this pizza features so much produce from our garden. I have zucchini in here, the flowers, some sweet peaches, fresh spearmint, mm. and then I made a pesto with three different varieties of basil. Oh, wow. That was really good. It's good, yeah. Now, if people want to get these recipes, where can they go? You can go on our website at sabot.org, and you can find the recipes both for the pizza and for the cocktail on there. Welcome back to Texas Eats. The Hot Box is a barbecue joint located on the southwest side of San Antonio. They're smoking up classic Texas barbecue like prime brisket and loading it on grilled cheese sandwiches. 
When you come out to the hot box, you can get, get this, a brisket grilled cheese sandwich. It is gooey, ooey goodness. That looks phenomenal. That's a lot of cheese, y'all. You get barbecue sauce on the side. They also have like a corn in a cup or an elote style item on the side there. Pickles and onions. And I want to put some barbecue sauce on it, y'all. This is how we do it. I just want to put it right on top. Ooh. Here we go. That's the bite. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's exactly what you want. The cheese is melted perfectly. The texture on the outside of the toast has a really nice crunch to it. Now this one is extra cheesy. I got an extra cheese added to it. So if you want it like on that next gooey gooey level, you ask for the extra cheese. This is where it's at. If you're looking for the next brisket sandwich you want to get, the hot box, man, this is where it's at. The hot box is also serving up pork ribs, pork tenderloin, and jalapeno cheddar sausage. If you're a rib fanatic, you want to find that next rib place, you got to come check out the hot box. Look at this bad boy. They got two different styles of ribs out here. This one, we're going in on it. Look how juicy. And that bark on the outside, they put a little extra seasoning on there too. Just a little sprinkle of good flavor on there. And that rub is crazy, y'all. It's like, what, three, four layers of goodness. Falls right off, super tender. Here we go. The brown sugar shines through in a really good way. It like elevates all the other flavors on there to the next level. Mm. Owner James English opened the spot earlier this year, but had to adjust with the ever-changing climate to make sure that the restaurant didn't have to close its doors permanently. This is definitely a passion project. Uh, being in a backyard for so many years, loving to cook, and putting a business model and sense to it is not always the easiest thing, hence why we started in a food truck. Want to make sure that it grew organically. I think it's one of those things where, you know, I'm getting to the age where it's a little bit of lifestyle. Nobody's gonna yell at me if you're having a beer at three in the afternoon. The barbecue joint is new, but it feels like it's been here forever. A great addition to the evolving barbecue scene in San Antonio. And the smoked barbacoa tacos are one of the best bites in the Alamo City. You're a Grammy Award winning musician. With the Chris Pettis band. With the Chris Pettis band. Yes, sir. But then you come out here and you can also cook up some mean barbacoa. Oh, yes. Are you married? No, sir. You will be after this. <laughs> if you're not getting these tacos, you're doing something wrong. I'll tell you that right now. To learn more about restaurants across San Antonio, watch me every Thursday at 1 p.m. on SA Live for my weekly segment, Elder Eats. And to get more food pics and videos, follow me on Instagram, at Elder Eats. And next, we travel to a dessert spot serving wildly sweet creations. Texas Eats will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. I'm here on Blanco Road by Churchill High School to go inside of a snack shop that's serving up some insane treats. You gotta check it out. Let's go inside Aloha Shaved Ice. Aloha Shaved Ice is a family owned San Antonio snack shop serving up epic frozen and hot treats. Aloha Shaved Ice! Like their massive Oreo Overload Milkshake. <laughs> Cookies and cream ice cream gets added to a blender with ice cold milk. Then, a glass gets rimmed with vanilla cake icing and crushed up Oreos. The shake gets poured into the glass and gets topped with an ice cream sandwich, a scoop of cookies and cream ice cream, whipped cream, Oreo cookies, crushed Oreo cookies, and chocolate syrup. This right here is the Oreo Overload. Hey, it's cool. cookies and cream milkshake. You got Oreos on top. You have a cookie sandwich ice cream bar in the inside of this thing. Here we go. Take a little bite off the top. Try some of the shake. <laughs> if you love Oreos, this is like an Oreo dream. If you're a fan of confetti cake, their birthday blast is everything you'll ever want. Confetti cake ice cream gets mixed with ice cold milk and added to the blender. Then a glass gets rimmed with vanilla cake frosting and mini sprinkles. The milkshake gets poured into the glass and topped with a huge piece of birthday cake, a scoop of confetti ice cream, and a cherry on top. And this one right here is called the birthday blast. You got a, a piece of birthday cake on there. You have the confetti birthday ice cream on top and then a confetti ice cream shake in there. You have all the sprinkles on the sides. If it's your birthday, wish for nothing else. This is what you should be wishing for. Try the shake. Oh wow. It's like you liquefied cake and ice cream from your birthday party and put it all together. It's exactly what you want it to be. I'm gonna try some of the cake, a little bit of the ice cream on top too. Happy birthday to me. That's what I'm talking about. Get my little cherry there. The snack shop opened five years ago in the Alamo City and customers have fallen in love with their wacky creations. Our most popular item is definitely the supernova. What's on the supernova? It's gonna be our mango Italian ice with our homemade blend chamoy topped with Lucas, cucumber spears, and gummy bears. Now this is like a mango nala on the next level, okay? You got the cucumbers on the outside, layers of house-made chamoy using their own recipe, plus gummy bears on top, Lucas seasoning, and then the tamarind straw on the side. This is how you do it, y'all. Check that out. Everything is so fresh, delicious. The chamoy has a great flavor to it. Now look at that big old chunk of cucumber that comes on there. That makes it healthy, right? The snack shop is serving up hot items like corn in a cup and hot Cheetos with cheese. And they're also serving up one of the largest banana splits I've ever seen. That is insane. It's huge. It's like the size of my head. You guys got to come out here. Aloha Shave Guys right off of Blanco Road by Churchill High School across from Las Palapas. All the treats are amazing. Everything's fresh, made to order. It's so good. They have different delivery systems, so hit them up. Follow them on social media to see what they're what they're doing. They're coming up with new creations all the time. This is where it's at, y'all. This is, this is the good stuff.
Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Texas Eats. And to get more information on all the restaurants that you saw on today's show, just head to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. And don't forget to follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And join me every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning right here on KSAT 12 to get even more restaurants that you won't want to miss because this is how Texas eats.